Hello everyone, hope you're having a great day and I welcome you all to this day 3 of AWS series. Today's session is all about how to launch an EC2 instance. In this session, you will learn the step by step method to successfully launch an EC2 instance on AWS. I hope you are clear with the agenda, so let's begin. Before we begin, subscribe to IntelliPad and don't forget to press the bell icon to get more updates. When you're launching a server, when you're launching an instance, the first thing you'll have to choose is the AMI, that is the Amazon Mission Image. And over here, you will get an option to choose different types of operating systems. So you can choose from Amazon Linux, uh, there is Mac OS, there is Red Hat, there is SUSE Linux, there is Ubuntu. So I'm gonna go with the Ubuntu server. So I want a Ubuntu instance running on my AWS account. All right, I'm selecting it. All right, so as I told you, if uh, in your first 12 months of creating an account, you'll be given something called the free tier. And if you are staying within the free tier, you will not get billed anything. So you can use AWS services for free. So the only type of uh, instance you can choose is t2.micro, which comes under the free tier eligibility, uh, free tier category. And in this case, you will be provided with one core. So you would know what two cores, three, uh, a four core CPU, a five, six core CPU uh, is. So basically it's hardware. So here they'll provide you one virtual CPU with one GB of RAM. So you can choose bigger instances also. So you can see there is a instance with eight GB, eight cores and 32 GB of RAM. And if you just come down, you would find more and more of this. Let me just make it once again. Yeah, so if you just come down, you can see uh, this particular instance type has 36 cores and 244 GB of RAM, uh, so memory, okay? So you can choose bigger instances, but bigger instance, bigger instance types cost way more. So for practicing, please stick with t2.micro. Okay, so next is configure instance details. Yeah, so I just want to create one server, so I'm going to keep the number of instances as one. So I'm just gonna choose, I just want one number, of, one server, so I'm gonna keep it as one and go on to the next part. So next part comes the storage. So as it is an Ubuntu server, uh, you don't need a lot of storage. You just need 8 GB of, uh, because it's a server, it is not a GUI Ubuntu tool. If it is GUI, you would need more uh, storage space to run the server, but it is server. Uh, it is a server, you just get the command line. Uh, so in that case, you would not need a lot of storage. So I'm just gonna go with the provided 8 GB over here. You can increase this also to 100 or how much ever you want. So I'm gonna keep it as eight. And next, tags. So tags are basically to, uh, for example, let's say you have 20 servers in your account. You don't know which are the servers you created. So you can tag all of those servers with a common name. Uh, so I'm just gonna name them server one. So uh, you can tag them and you can just search for that particular tag and you can find your servers easily in a bunch of servers. So that's why tags are useful. They are not, uh, any particular uh, thing. Okay, and then comes something called a security group. So security group decides which, so uh, who can uh, log into your server or what protocols are allowed into your server or allowed out of, uh, out of your server. For now, there is only one type of protocol which is allowed, which is SSH. Okay, so SSH lets you to securely log in into the account, uh, into the server. The, it's called secure shell. SSH means secure shell. So it's a TCP protocol, which allows you to log in, in authenticate into the server, basically by providing private key, okay, private and public key. So it's uh, symmetric encryption. And uh, yeah, so it runs on port number 22. And I'm going to allow one more type of protocol. So I want to allow another TCP protocol, which is HTTP, because I'm going to run a web server inside my instance, which I'm creating, okay? So I'm going to review and launch. So you can just review all things. So as I told, uh, so improve your instances security or security group is open to the world. If you see over here, anybody can connect to my server if they know the public IP address of the instance which I'm creating. But the thing is, they would not have the private key file. Only if you have the private key file, then you can log in into the server. But the private key will be only available with me. I will only have the private key. You will not have it. So because of that, you cannot connect to it. Because the server will have a public key and you'll have to upload the private key. The private key file will decrypt the public key. Only if it decrypts it, then that server will let you work on it. So it will only then it will authenticate you into the server. Got it? All right. So now let's uh, do that. So you can either choose a key which already exists 
or I'm just going to create a new key pair so that you guys would understand what exactly is going on. Okay, so I'm going to name the key as uh, practice or I'm just going to name it webinar key because I wouldn't need it after this particular webinar. And uh, yeah, so I'm choosing, you can choose what type of algorithm uh, you will, you want the key pair to be on. So I'm just going to choose RSA and download the key pair. Okay, so it will download in a format called .pem and uh, make sure you have this pem file and i'm going to launch the instances okay so the instances is getting launched and uh, one more thing we'll have to do is that so we'll have to log in into the server so there are multiple ways of logging into the server so one simple way is to directly connect it from the browser so once the server is running we can see right server one this is the uh, tag i provided so once the server is running it will show the status will be running here and the status checks will be two out of two all right and then so you can see it is running right now and you can see the details of the server over here this is the public ip address right 18.116.115.11 so let me run this public ip address first just to show you that there are no uh, web servers running here okay so you can see there is no website hosted on this particular uh, server or in, on this particular uh, instance so i'm going to run a web so uh, sorry website inside this and then show you uh, so that you could understand how exactly it works so as i told you there are multiple ways of connecting to the server one way is of directly connecting it here by clicking on connect and you can just go to ec2 instance connect and click on connect and it will create a window right here and you can directly log in from here but the thing is your internet has to be really really fast for this to be available uh, and working all the time. But if your internet is slow, I would suggest you to use a tool called Putty, all right, Putty. So before using the Putty tool, you will have to generate the private key file uh, in Putty's format. So we already have the file called uh, the .pem file, right? So let this run because the internet is a little... Right now, I think the uh, internet issue got resolved. All right. Um, okay, so let this connect. Yeah, so uh, while... While I was teaching, I uploaded. Okay, so now first let me explain this. So now you can see the uh, server has been uh, launched and it has been opened here in this site. So now you can just see pwd, so slash home slash ubuntu. So let me just create a file here so that when I connect it via putty, you would know it's the same server. Okay, so one dot txt file has been created. So this is one way of accessing. You can access it directly from the browser, but I wouldn't suggest this uh, method. I would suggest you to use a tool like putty, a client tool like putty. So, so first I've uploaded, so I'll just show you. First I opened this tool called putty gen, uh, putty key generator. Then I loaded the dot pem file. Okay, and then I'm saving this file. So I'm just going to use the same name, um, webinar key dot ppk saved. All right. So I'm just going to close this now. Then you have to open the party tool. So this is party tool. Okay. So now I'll show you how to connect with it. So you click on the server and this will provide the server details. Okay, so the public IP address, you will have to copy this address, public IP address. There would be a public IP and a private IP. Don't use a private IP address, use the public IP address. And I'm just going to refresh this once again to show you there is no website running in this particular server. Okay, because I've not launched it yet. So then I open the server, I put the host name, and uh, then I'm going to SSH because as I told you, we'll have to authenticate via SSH. So I'm going to SSH and authentication and I'll have to choose the private key file we just created. So webinar key and open it and just provide yes. So I've launched a Ubuntu server and the regular login ID for a Ubuntu server is Ubuntu. If it is a Linux server, any other type of Linux server, the username would be EC2 user easy to hyphen user so it will be ubuntu for ubuntu service so i'm going to use that so now you can see that it has been uh, it it logged in for me directly because i've provided the right private key file so now if we do an ls it should show the one.txt file which i created before because it is the same server okay all right so now i'll just increase the size of the uh second there is settings so that it's visible for you guys better Okay, all right. So first thing you'll have to do is update the server. So sudo apt get update. 
because uh, some of the packages in the server would be outdated. So every time you launch a new server in AWS, always update it. Okay. So once updated, I'm going to launch this web server right now. So there is a web server called Apache 2. So I'm going to launch this web server in Ubuntu. So once I launch this, then we refresh the page. We can see a website running here. Okay, so the web server is launched, it is enabled, and the web server would be running right now. Okay, so the web server is launched, guys. Okay, so now if I refresh now, it should be running a server, uh, sorry, a web page inside the server so that it is showing in my uh, site. So, yeah, now you can see I have hosted a website inside the server which I just launched. So, to make it even clearer for you guys, so let me. So the uh, place where this particular file will be stored is uh, slash var slash www slash sorry html. All right. So here you can see the index.html file, right? So let me do one thing. Let me remove this index.html file. Okay, I removed it. If I do an ls, you won't see the file. If I refresh this, it will not show the file because that was the file which it was uh, showing here. So if I create another index.html file here, so sudo nano index.html. Okay, so I'm going to just provide this is, okay, let me just put it in. This is a server. So I'm gonna save this, okay. Now, if I do an ls, you can see there is an index.html file. So now Apache 2 basically searches for the index.html file inside this particular direct uh, inside this particular path. Okay, so now if I refresh this, it will show the website. This is a server. So this is how the basic websites are hosted, guys, inside a server. So a web server is run, and inside the place where it will be looking for the server, that place would basically be. So that place, if you put the file, it will be showing it. For example, if I create another file, sudo nano uh, 1.html, hello. So I'm just saving this uh, uh, 1.html file, hello. Okay, so now you can see there is a one.html file and an index.html file. So now it normally searches for index.html. It doesn't uh, show the one.html file. If you want to see the one.html file, then you provide one slash one.html and you can see it shows the one.html file over here. So this is basically it, guys. This is basically the uh, this is basically launching a server and I've showed you how to launch a website inside a web server and uh, yeah. So I think you learned a lot from this particular session. Just a quick info guys. If you want to make a career in cloud and DevOps, then IntelliPad provides an advanced certification in cloud computing and DevOps by ENICT Academy IIT Roorkee. And it is taught by IIT Roorkee professors and industry experts. This course is designed to help you upskill and land in your dream job. Now that we are done with the session, don't forget to subscribe to IntelliPad and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on IntelliPad.